we do have a session on the maxillary artery the branches external carotid artery the branches because all these are asked as a short note so maxillary artery but for the time being i will be just mentioning the branches of maxillary artery which you need to write when you are asked to write a short note on infratemporal fossa because when you go on writing about the maxillary artery you won't get time to finish the infratemporal fossa so first for just name sake i'm going to divide the maxillary artery as three, having three parts first part second part third part and now i'm going to just mention about the branches of maxillary artery so for the first part there is an easy code and the learning of anatomy is made fun with acronyms isn't it so or mnemonics so for the first part we have one code that is the mind d a m a i so according to this we will try to expand the branches of first part of maxillary artery so this is according to the origin in order from the maxillary artery from the first part of maxillary artery so d stands for deep auricular so d stands for deep auricular branch then a stands for anterior tympanic deep auricular anterior tympanic m stands for middle meningeal a stands for accessory middle meningeal and i stands for inferior alveolar so these are the branches arising from the first part deep auricular anterior tympanic middle meningeal accessory middle meningeal and inferior alveolar so these are the branches arising from the first part of maxillary artery we will see the branches arising from the second part of maxillary artery so we have already mentioned the second part is mainly concerned with the blood supply of muscles in the infratemporal fossa and around the infratemporal fossa so which are the muscles in the infratemporal fossa we have mentioned temporalis and the pterygoid muscles and which are the muscles around we have already mentioned about the masseter and one more muscle that is the buccinator so we have mainly four sets arising from the second part so branch which is going and supplying the temporalis muscle you call it as deep temporal branches the temporalis muscle is supplied by deep temporal branches then the next is going to supply the pterygoids the medial pterygoid muscle and the lateral pterygoid muscle so you call it as pterygoid branches then we have mentioned the third muscle that is the masseter which when we cut off have entered the infratemporal fossa so that is the masseteric branches and the fourth one is going to the buccinator so you you call it as buccal branches so these are the four sets of branches arising from the second part of maxillary artery and now we will move on to the third part of maxillary artery third part of maxillary artery actually it is entering into the terigo palatine fossa through the terigo maxillary fissure and again to make it easy we have another mnemonic that is pig pass p i g p a s that is pig pass for the third part of maxillary artery so let's expand p stands for posterior superior alveolar p stands for posterior superior alveolar i stands for infra orbital g stands for greater palatine we have p i g posterior superior alveolar infra orbital greater palatine now next we expand the remaining three letters p stands for pharyngeal pharyngeal artery then a stands for artery of pterygoid canal a stands for artery of pterygoid canal and s stands for sphenopalatine artery sphenopalatine artery so these are the 
main branches arising from the third part of maxillary artery. Though you won't be seeing these branches in the maxillotemporal fossa, when you mention it will look good if you could mention the branches arising from the third part of maxillary artery.